We speak with the Frame.io team about camera to cloud technology at CineGear 2022. This is a CineD Gear News video supported by B&H and CVP. Hey everybody, Graham Mailer Sheldon here at CineGear 2022. I'm at the Frame.io booth here with Michael from Frame.io. And I guess now uh, Adobe, is the lunchroom better, different, same? Absolutely it's better, yeah, of course. Uh, Adobe acquired us about five, six months ago. And it's great to actually have such a larger group of people to have touch points to. Okay, very cool. Well, we're here to talk about primarily camera to cloud. Uh, and you have really kind of a whole ecosystem of products here behind us to help explain that. So take it away. Yeah, you know, if you think about it, 10 years from now, cameras will not have media cards. We won't have hard drives, we won't remove things. You know, it'll be all born in the cloud. Every electronic asset will be born instantly in the cloud. If you were to go on set 10 years from now with a hard drive, it would be as strange as coming on set today with a videotape cassette, right? So what we're trying to do is create a pathway to cloud-first production. And we have to do that today using proxy files. So right, I, right here I have a red Komodo, and on the back I'm using a Teradek Serve 4K. This is a 4K H.265 10-bit 422 encoder. If I roll a take of actually Lisa here, so here's Lisa shooting us, and then I cut that take, I am now sending a 4K file directly into Frame.io from the camera itself, and it's transmitting that file right into Frame.io behind us, and so we're actually moving 4K media so that the editor can be editing it right now, or anyone in the production pipeline can be interfacing with it. We're doing that with, uh, this is a Sclera 4G LTE quad bonded modem. So what people can do is use devices like this so they're not worried about Wi-Fi and passwords and SSIDs. This is your internet you take with you. And it uses carriers from AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile, and it finds those cell towers and is constantly querying them and presenting them as a single high bandwidth bonded hotspot. So we can upload sometimes a 10 minute take into, um, uh, into Frame.io in like 20 or 30 seconds. So it's really fast to see that happen. Um, what's also exciting about this is this is a cinema solution with the Serve 4K, but we also have a solution with our friends at Atomus. They make these little ninja monitors, which everyone uses, and now there's a back connection that allows you to connect to the internet. So this now can capture uh, 4K ProRes or even 8K ProRes and then transmit a proxy file right to the cloud, right to Frame.io on virtually any mirrorless HDMI camera. So, I mean, Michael, at a high level, this idea is very exciting to me as a producer. I mean, moving Video Village to Malibu, for example, there's a lot, I mean, working with a post team, uh, obvious advantages there through, of course, Frame.io, which honestly, we're using Frame.io right now during the show to coordinate our video production. So clearly we're happy users of the Frame.io. However, I, I, the bottleneck here has got to be just infrastructure in America, right? I, you know, the key word, you, you blasted past it, proxies. Yep. You know, we're kind of in an 8K world, depending on who you talk to. Maybe some of us living in a super 35, 4K world, like our friends at Airy. So, I mean, you, you've painted a, a grand future that I'm excited about, but when do you think we're moving beyond proxies, you know? Yeah, so I believe the tipping point is going to be around the year 2026. And so what's happening right now is the infrastructure of 5G, millimeter wavelength, the high bandwidth sections of 5G, Wi-Fi 6, and satellite, low orbit, low orbit satellite. Um, this is sort of like taking the idea of Sirius XM radio, HD audio, and making it available through low Earth orbit satellites so that people can have high bandwidth wherever they go. So a decade from now, people will not be building cell towers and be like, where's the nearest tower? Everyone will be online because the tower is going to be a couple hundred miles up. A satellite base, yeah. Yeah, and then it will cover entire states. And so <laughs> we are in nearing that tipping point of uh, 2026 where that is going to really mature. We've all heard of 5G. We've all, most people have heard of Wi-Fi 6 and they understand satellite data. Uh, but it's all being put together in the infrastructure and it's going to be about four more years for that to really become mature enough that we're going to see that. Plus, you have to sync that world up with camera manufacturers that build this integration so that they can transmit their own files to the cloud. Cameras today, putting a Wi-Fi chip in a camera is still pretty new. 
and that's going to become very normal. Seeing a monitor with wireless antennas, this is new. People have never really seen that because this is now an internet device. That is going to become normalized, and we're going to see cameras doing the same thing. And so what, what it really kind of funnily boils down to this is a very souped up version, but this is a Panavision um, lens connected to an iPhone 13 Pro Max. We're transmitting a phone, and if you think about it, a phone is a really great um, sort of north star to where cinema is going to be going. Because a phone, is, what's a phone? It's a camera and a sensor, but it's a monitor, it's a media encoder, a storage device, and it's a modem. And when you think of all those things, even though we're not going to be shooting on phones for cinema in 10 years, all the principles I just mentioned are going to become normalized in every cinema camera. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's kind of refreshing to hear you talk about cell phones uh, in a simpatico way and not as competitors, right? Because I think some of us maybe here at CineGear are like, ah, phones are taking over, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, you make a lot of good points there. How has the adoption been on the camera manufacturer side, I mean, you're right, antennas, kind of a new, seeing antennas on hardware, kind of a new thing. But are kind of people on board with that future on the manufacturer side and other entities? That is a really, really good question. Um, that's a very provocative question. And it, it really, the answer is absolutely. The pandemic, while it has a whole bunch of bad elements tied to it, it also unlocked certain ideas that people wouldn't have maybe accelerated towards. And now everybody's seeing, okay, if we, what you were describing and you were using ways to uh, connect with movie stars and try to get them to shoot their own stuff when we were on lockdown, that's sort of, while we're never gonna do it exactly like that again, it unlocks something that we wouldn't have looked at before. And so now all the camera manufacturers are thinking about that. And so our ability to convince them to join our camera cloud program it's really easy because they're like, yeah, this is like making the lockdown situation easier and more robust. So where is the technology uh, now? Are there just spots in the United States, for example? Obviously, it's an international industry where it's harder, it's, it's easier. I'm just trying to kind of understand. Yeah, the simplest answer is if you can make a phone call, you can shoot camera to cloud. It's that, it's that, it's designed to do that. These proxy files are optimized for 4G and even 3G situations in some areas that only have 3G coverage. Uh, if you're traveling to any uh, large, medium, or small city, you have cell phone coverage. And even along large roadways and near large road interchanges are all cell phone coverage. If you can make that phone call today, you can shoot camera to cloud over the next I mean, if you think about it, every single day bandwidth goes up. It can't go down. Bandwidth only increases. Tomorrow's bandwidth will be better than today's bandwidth, and that will always be true. And tomorrow's coverage will always be a little bit wider than today's. It'll never be reduced. Every telecom company knows that. So we have the advantage of consumers that want data as well. That actually favors filmmakers, just like gamers favor filmmakers because they force the game engines to improve for visual effects. So consumers have a role in this and they actually serve the infrastructure that filmmakers can take advantage of. And we're seeing that play out and I actually think it's gonna come sooner than later. And again, the pandemic helped accelerate people's timelines. And even though right now it seems like this bandwidth is really far away, it's literally being built right now, launched into space and set up as we speak. And it just becomes a process of selling, turning on, educating and deployment. Not We're past the conceptual phases here. This isn't theoretical. It's not like one day this will happen. Those days actually are on people's calendars and we simply need to start educating our industry to prepare for it. Which is why understanding how modems work is going to become a, a, an important role, an important understanding and in, uh, part of workflow. Well, I mean, I was kind of blown away that you, I mean, you put a date on it. You said 2026, thank you. I'll talk to you in a couple years. I'm sure it'll, check it'll, it'll, I'll check you a couple years. Okay, so final, final question here. Um, execution, you just mentioned people need to start understanding modems. They need understanding that what the infrastructure required to do this. Is this two things for indie filmmakers out there? A, is this a studio thing? Should indie people just ignore this? Doesn't sound like you're gonna think that's the case. And then is this an AC role? Is this a DIT role? Are you gonna let the industry just kind of figure out on their own? What, what do you think in terms of executing this right now, not in a couple years? Another really good question, honestly. Um, 
This is not for major motion pictures exclusively at all. Uh, the larger your production is, the more resources you have. So the first thing, I mean, think about, think about Mini DV, think about Final Cut Pro, think about Firewire. Who did that serve? It served the entrepreneurial startup indie filmmaker because they needed the advantage that those technologies opened up, right? When we were learning those cameras, Hollywood was still shooting on Kodak, right? So this is really a grassroots ground up solution. We have major television shows and features using this because it's in a, a, reduce, a reduction of anxiety. When you can hit play on your asset right away and your editor is involved wherever they are, that reduces anxiety. Ang on the part of the network too, honestly. Absolutely, everyone, everyone wins. And anxiety is, is, is contagious, so you want no one to have it, right? Uh, but when it comes to independence, this is uh, totally accessible. In fact, people that have um, Adobe Creative Cloud accounts, they actually have Frame.io for free with 100 gigs available to them because since Adobe now owns Frame.io, they made it available to their Creative Cloud uh, subscribers. So you can log into the Frame.io window and check, start checking out Frame.io and we give you Camera to Cloud as part of that. So that's not designed for Hollywood, that's designed for everyone. And I'm when I'm using iPhones here or uh, a Ninja which connects to every mirrorless camera, these cameras are available. This will take a camera that's seven years old and turn it into a Camera to Cloud device. So you don't have to buy very much. It's only a $300 internet adoption here. And then you just have to have a Wi-Fi connection. You can start with a hotspot, you get at the AT&T store, or you can move up to like a sclera modem that's more industrial. But it's just internet access. So we're really trying to help promote collaboration across people. And people make better projects when they can collaborate efficiently and they communicate with each other and they're not so white knuckled about what things are and I don't want to show it till it's ready, all that stuff. I never find that helps make a better movie. Uh, in my experience, transparency and collaboration is going to yield better results and we're taking that to the next level by letting everybody that you want to collaborate to have instant access to it and FedEx is no longer involved in that process. I, I love that. Yeah, and you know, sometimes uh, uh, a, a few notes on a napkin just doesn't cut it. Some just visual, you know, actually seeing the shot is huge for every department head, of course. And what you just described, I mean, a ninja, you know, uh, over a thousand bucks. I mean, uh, Creative Cloud, what is it, like $120 a year? I'm just trying to put a number on it. Yeah. Like, these aren't astronomical numbers that I'm naming out here. These I aren't tens of thousands of dollars. I think this is under 700 total with the, the entire device. Hook it up to a Canon, a Fuji, a uh, Panasonic, a Sony, those all will work. And then, um, you know, your phone, you can use Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro now has an integration with Frame.io. Uh, this, of course, is a souped up version right here, but essentially it's just Filmic Pro with a better lens, and you have the ability to do that today. People can download Filmic Pro, connect it to Frame.io. For a lot of people, the phone is the right camera. We're not, I'm not judging which camera of these is better. These, these are all. They're all great for the right usage, and so we want to let each user decide which instrument is best for them and make sure that Camera to Cloud works for all. Well, Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Congratulations uh, on being part of Team Adobe. That's extremely exciting. And enjoy the rest of CineGear 2022. I'm going to follow up with you in uh, CineGear 2026, I guess. Uh, it's a deal. Thanks, all. Thanks, everybody, for watching our continuing coverage of CineGear 2022. Stay tuned to CineD.com for more. Hey, it's me again. Don't miss your chance to win one of 10 Fujifilm X-H2S cameras, as well as $1,000 in cash. That's right. Visit CineD.com to learn more.